In a previous video, we discussed a Bayes' theorem and we gave a formal proof of Bayes' theorem. In this video, we're going to dwell on this Bayes' rule and try to understand what the different terms of the equation mean. In particular, we're going to discuss epistemological consequences of this equation, as well as its implications for artificial intelligence and, in particular, uh, machine learning frameworks. So what does Bayes' rule tell us? Well, the first thing to notice is that uh, there's this one term on the left that's all alone and it's because it's in some sense the most important uh, uh, component of Bayes' rule and it's the probability of the theory given uh, the data d. So it's a probability of a theory, which is something that may sound a bit weird because you might think that some theories are true, others are false. So why would we talk about probabilities of theories? Well, there are different ways to interpret this, but one of the most common way to interpret this is to say that what we are describing here is not whether the theory is actually true or not. It is our own uh, so-called epistemic uncertainty about the status of uh, theory T. Now, this is not my favorite uh, interpretation of uh, this left-hand term. What I would rather say is, uh, notably because uh, it also appears in this other equation I have on my hat, uh, which is about making predictions. Uh, this term is important because we're going to use it to make predictions afterwards. And thus, what I would argue is that the more straightforward and um, uh, let's say, um, uh, parsimonious interpretation of this left-hand term is just how much we should rely on the theory T to make predictions given that we've observed data D. In other words, it's more how reliable the theory T, how much we should trust theory T once we've collected data, data D. And thus many Bayesians actually rather call the, these uh, left-hand terms the credence of theory T t given data d and because it is the credence we obtain once we've collected the data d we say that it is the posterior credence that is the credence after having discovered the data d and computed base rule so that's really what we are aiming at uh, in the base rule what we really want to find out is how much we should trust any given theory and it sounds like something we should be doing for science as well. Uh, perhaps science should rather be about identifying the theories we should trust to make predictions rather than, uh, say, uh, discarding false theories, which is, of course, very relevant as well uh, to make predictions. But it seems that the most straightforward uh, goal we should have to make predictions is to uh, determine theories that are relevant. That's what Bayes' rule tells us to compute, this uh, posterior credence. And in order to do this, we're going to have to rely on the different terms on the right-hand side. In particular, the first term on the right-hand side, uh, the probability of the data given t, is also called the likelihood of the data. And one thing that is, I think, very important to insist on is the fact that the probability of the data, also called the likelihood of the data, is not the credence of a theory. Uh, let me insist on this again. The likelihood of the data is not the credence of a theory. Okay? A theory can be highly credible even though it has a poor prediction of the data, even though the data you see you've collected is not that likely, especially if no theory is able to explain this data correctly. And this is very often the case in complex sciences like, for instance, uh, macroeconomics or finance or all of these uh, complex systems. Conversely, a theory can be absolutely not credible if, uh, even though it explains perfectly the data, and this is typically the case uh, of overfitting. If you're doing overfitting, it means that you came up with a theory that perfectly predicts the data, that matches the data perfectly. But quite often you have this theory that you should nevertheless not trust, and this is because they're doing overfitting, and typically it would be because they are overly complex. And uh, this complexity of the theories is naturally encoded by Bayes' rule in this other term here, which is called the prior probability of uh, the theory or prior credence in the theory T. This is a term that is uh, very weird at first because it says that we should give credences to theories even though we have no data. This is the prior credence. It is what we should believe before looking at the data. 
And according to Bayesianism, you should always have a prior credence before uh, looking at the data. You always have to come up with an idea of how believable different theories are, even if you have no data to compare the different theories. And this is, by the way, something that's not actually that weird in epistemology, in philosophy of science. Typically, there's this concept known as Occam's razor that says that simpler theories are more believable a priori. And this should suggest that some theories are more be believable, have greater prior credence. Even though there's no data to judge the reliability of theories, we should nevertheless have credences in different theories. Uh, this is something that disturbs a lot of people and it's the reason why Bayesianism has been rejected uh, by a lot of scientists and philosophers for a long, long time uh, until basically the 60s uh, or 70s. And finally, you have this term in the denominator which is uh, called the marginal or sometimes it's called the partition function. Uh, and basically, it is a way to get the theory T to compete with alternative theories A. In particular, what the denominator says is that if a theory is performing very well and predicts the data very well, it may nevertheless be not credible if other theories, alternative theories, are performing better than the theory T itself. So in Bayesianism, the validity, the degree of validity of the theory is always relative to other alternatives. And if there's a, essentially a bad competition, if the competition is not good enough as to, uh, explaining the data D correctly, then a, a theory T may, never be, may nevertheless be quite reliable. At least it would be the more reliable approach uh, to make predictions since it performs better than the competition. And that's an important part of Bayesianism. In particular, it says that we should never think theories independently. Like we should always try to compare theories to judge how believable the different theories are. And we should not try to reject a theory on its own or given its own merits. It should always be a comparison between different theories. Why? Because at the end of the way, we want to make predictions and we need to rely on some theories to make predictions. So there you have it, uh, this is Bayesian, and uh, more and more uh, researchers in artificial intelligence seem to believe that this Bayesian framework is, in some sense, the right way to go to do machine learning and uh, build artificial intelligence.